Coming up on Cronkite News, how a shortage of court-appointed special advocates in Arizona might be helped by a new innovation that can allow more people to volunteer as CASAs. Plus, we take a look at the new murals going up around the valley during Black History Month. And how Arizona's native communities are looking to bring tourism back to pre-pandemic levels. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Colt Almadova. And I'm Sedona Meadows. Thank you for joining us. CASAs, or Court Appointed Special Advocates, are volunteers that work with the court system and advocate for children in foster care. There is a huge shortage of volunteers, but some innovations brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic may make it easier for people to become a CASA volunteer. It's like establishing a friendship. Stephanie Webster underwent in-person training to become a CASA in 2015. Since then, she's advocated for both young children and teens. You picked this case, so you want to be their friend, but you need to know them. You need to learn about every part of their case. Webster now helps train new CASAs. CASA training specialist Marcel Manriquez is a part of the organization's new virtual training created during the pandemic. We are really pleased with the results that we've gotten from doing virtual, and so we are gearing up to keeping that around and making sure that we have that as an option for individuals. Menriquez leads several of the virtual training sessions that include close to 500 volunteers from all over the state. In the past, the 30 hours of training CASAs need was only available in person, which Menriquez says limited who could become a CASA. We don't want training to be the one thing that's holding you back from being able to then help a child. Currently, there are over 1,200 CASA volunteers here in the state, and they are serving over 1,400 kids. But in Department of Child Services custody, there are over 12,000 kids that do not have a CASA. The virtual training requires 15 hours of in-class work and 15 hours working on your own which includes required readings, watching videos, and working with groups. Menriquez says the virtual option is here to stay. We will continue to keep the virtual option up and running so that we can hit some of those other individual situations that don't allow them to come in person. Webster, like many other CASAs, still keeps in touch with former clients who have aged out of the system, including one who she considers like a grandchild. She keeps in touch with me all the time, and she comes to me with a lot of questions but I see the growth and I think that she's going to have a great life. Thanks in part to the help of CASAs like Stephanie Webster. Another change that came because of COVID is that many court hearings are held virtually, which makes it much easier for everyone, including CASAs, to attend. For more information on becoming a CASA volunteer, you can go to azcasavolunteer.org. You've seen it in movies and court shows, lawyers keeping potential jurors off the panel without having to explain why. The state Supreme Court eliminated that option here in Arizona, but a new bill could partially undo that. The bill was endorsed by a state house committee. Supporters said the restoration of peremptory challenges in criminal cases would help ensure fair verdicts. But longstanding critics of the challenges say research has shown jurors of color are more often eliminated from jury pools. Arizona was the first state to eliminate the practice. The rule change by the Arizona Supreme Court took effect January 1st. Three controversial bills made moves in the Arizona State Legislature last week. Senate Bill 1164 passed committee and is now on its way to the Senate floor. It would ban abortions after 15 weeks in the state and could give felonies to any doctor who performs the procedure after 15 weeks. House Bill 2112 was approved by the House last week and is on its way over to the Senate. It seeks to put limits on how race and gender can be taught in Arizona schools. And finally, House Bill 2596 seeks to give the, le the legislature the power to overturn elections. Speaker of the House Rusty Bauer sent HB 2596 to 12 committees last week, and the bill would need to pass each of the 12 in order to advance to the House floor. A new bill aims to extend protections for LGBTQ community members in Arizona. Reporter Molly Hudson listened in on the press conference where leaders say it took time to get to this point. A group of bipartisan legislators, faith, business and community leaders gathered at the state capitol this morning to announce the introduction of a new bill. The bipartisan bill named the Equality and Fairness for All Arizonans would extend the current protections for LGBTQ members in employment, 
housing, and public accommodations and protect the religious rights of individuals and institutions. This measure isn't about special treatment, it's about equal treatment and about opportunity for all. Nobody should have to live in fear of being fired, denied housing, denied services simply for who they are or who they love. The bill introduced by Democrat Representative Amish Shaw and Republican House Speaker Rusty Bowers is aimed at updating the state's non-discrimination law. It would also ban the practice of conversion therapy among licensed healthcare professionals in Arizona, a part of the bill that Speaker Bowers says took time to create. This construct of this particular part of the bill is very finely crafted to preserve the exercise of religion in counseling and also to preserve thought and careful uh, medical training in the provision of that aspect of this bill. Speaker Bauer says he does not expect the path ahead to be easy, but he acknowledges the current bipartisanship behind the bill. In Phoenix, Molly Hudson, Cronkite News. Black History Month brings us festivals, performances, and for the second year in Phoenix, murals. Cronkite News reporter Andrea Villalobos shows us how the president and CEO of a multicultural company in downtown Phoenix is joining the celebrations. Since 1976, Black History Month has been officially celebrated in February. There are many ways to celebrate achievements in the black community, and art is one of them. Tania Torres and her team at Torres Multicultural Communications wanted to amplify black voices during Black History Month. That very same day, what she was looking for was at her doorstep. We felt it was uh, very serendipitous to have Gisette show up just that same afternoon, knocking on our doors, asking if we would like to be part of the project, which we, of course, enthusiastically said yes. The Black History Mural Project, led by Gisette Knight of the Shining Light Foundation, is painting 28 murals in Phoenix to represent the 28 days in Black History Month. Torres chose a mural featuring three pillars in the black community, Madame C.J. Walker, Mary Ellen Pleasant, and O.W. Gurley. Maria Madrid-Reed is the artist in charge of this mural. What I have is uh, what I like to call the millionaire's mural. They're, all three of them were entrepreneurs in their time, and they, they make huge fortunes. And I think it, it, it's a wasted opportunity not to learn about them. As a Latinx entrepreneur, Torres has followed Walker's story, and seeing her name on the list of murals felt like fate. I was very excited because it's someone that I have admired for a long time. Madrid Reed says the process for painting a mural can take around two weeks. From planning a design to finding a location, it doesn't come easily. You don't touch the mural until you have a concise idea. For Madrid Reed, painting this piece has allowed her to use her voice in a different way, through her brush. We are making an impact. We are creating conversations through the art, and it's, that's powerful. This and the other 27 murals will be finished by February 11th. Business owners can leave them up for as long as they'd like, and Torres plans on ke keeping hers up for as long as she can. In the newsroom, Andrea Villalobos, Cronkite News. Members of the Arizona National Guard are being sent to four sheriff offices across the state to assist in staffing shortages due to the ongoing pandemic. According to the communications director for the Arizona National Guard, 65 soldiers are being sent to the Maricopa, Yuma, Cochise, and Pinal County Sheriff offices. With many staff members out due to COVID-19, the National Guard members are being sent to assist front desk personnel and maintain safety and security. A COVID-19 hotel in Phoenix for people experiencing homelessness who have tested positive for the coronavirus wants to start giving the COVID-19 pill as a treatment. The hotel offers a place for people to quarantine while receiving food and medical treatment. The nonprofit Circle the City provides the medical care to the hotel. Circle the City's medical director says they are trying to keep the patients out of the hospital by giving them the oral treatment. The facility has 140 rooms, and right now the number of patients has been around 100. Native communities gathered this weekend for an annual festival after the pandemic paused it. Coming up, let's hope to bring tourism back to native lands. Plus, we take a look at some changes Southwest Air Airlines is making to the beverage menu. See what kind of drinks you can order starting next week.
Take a journey with Arizona PBS. Join us every Sunday afternoon for Destination Drama. Watch all your favorite PBS dramas like Grand Chester. I'm William Davenport, new vicar of Grandchester. Paul Dark. Nothing in my life is meaning without you. And Victoria. I know that I'm young, but I know my duty. And if you missed a recent primetime drama, we'll help you catch up on those too. Destination Drama, every Sunday afternoon at 1, only on Arizona PBS. The Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, social media, and producing, there's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. According to the Arizona Office of Tourism, Arizona travel spending declined from more than $25 billion in 2019 to $15 billion in 2020. Cultural tourism took a big part of that hit, with many tribal landmarks and attractions shut down during the pandemic. Mackenzie Allen Charmley has more on how the tribes are trying to bring tourism dollars back. With dancing, singing, food, art, and cultural exhibitions, the Arizona American Indian Association brought together representatives from the 22 tribes in the state to revitalize and bring awareness to cultural tourism. Board member Dorothy Gishi is grateful for Native communities to have more control over their narratives. As Native American indigenous tribes, we're wanting to take more of a role in inviting people to our different communities because we want to tell our stories. We know what our um, historical histories are. We know what our cultures are. However, COVID-19 was an immense burden on the tourism industry and especially its cultural sectors. According to the Arizona Office of Tourism, Arizona's travel economy, which includes native tourism, lost billions in revenue, dropping a total of 41% from 2019 to 2020. Native communities were especially affected. Hopi vendor Bonnie Sikakaku says her tribe faced hardship. It's been really um, a, a hard struggle, and, and that's probably been the most impactful thing, is not being able to come visit and learn who we are. And then the people that survive off of this economically are kind of without a job. Navajo and Hopi artist Sean Rogers says the event is an opportunity for those who can travel to tribal lands. To share our culture, it, it feels good when we bring it to you guys here in the city. It, it, it helps you, you know, and then you get a more in a depth uh, of what we are, what we do, what we pray for, what we sing for. In Scottsdale, Mackenzie Allen Charlie, Cronkite News. Many reservations and their tourist destinations are open for the tourism season. However, tribal officials recommend calling ahead to see if any COVID-19 precautions are in place. Several Arizona State Departments have come together to create a new prison rehabilitation program that has been a huge success. The program gives prisoners the skills necessary to earn their commercial driver's license and become truck drivers. More than 400 former prisoners have completed the program and have gotten their CDLs so far. The Arizona Department of Corrections, Rehabilitation and Reentry said it's programs like this one that are crucial to help people change their lives and return to the community. You may have some more beverage op options next time you catch a flight. Southwest Airlines is bringing back alcoholic beverages starting February 16th. The airline stopped beer, wine, and liquor service back in March of 2020. There were several incidents involving alcohol and disruptive passengers during the pandemic. United Airlines resumed their liquor sales back in November, and Delta Airlines added alcohol sales back to main cabin offerings in April of 2021. So far, American Airlines has not resumed alcohol sales. Phoenix may be seeing the end of cold days as temperatures are starting to rise here in the valley. Peyton Major is in the Weather Center to tell us what we can expect warmer days. 
Yes, we are heating up this week. We're even going to see temperatures at in, in the 80 degree range starting later on. There are absolutely no rain chances in the forecast either, and that's because of this ridge of high pressure that's hanging over the West Coast. It's packing the heat, especially to parts of California. San Francisco will see record highs later on. Starting tomorrow, actually, for us, we'll start to see those higher temperatures. 75 in Phoenix, 73 in Casa Grande, 51 in Flagstaff, 78 in Yuma. Beautiful day to head up north if you have the time. Let's zoom in on those valley highs though. S mid 70s all around. Our average is 70 degrees this time of year, but we are going to surpass that starting on Thursday. 82 degrees, our first 80 degree day of February and 2022. And we have an eventful weekend ahead. The Phoenix Open, great day to be on the golf course. Super Bowl Sunday, seeing 80 degree temperatures there. And Monday, we're also flirting with the 80s for our Valentine's Day. It might be time to take those shorts and tank tops out of storage and make sure to pack that sunscreen. In the Cronkite Weather Center, I'm Peyton Major. I'm Ashley Engel. Coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. It was a wild night in Tempe on Saturday as Sun Devils scored an upset victory over UCLA. Can they do it again tonight against fourth ranked Arizona? Your favorite member benefit is getting better and bigger. This is wonderful. Over the next year, Passport is adding new shows and doubling the number of episodes for you to stream. They give us all that they've got. From your favorite cooking and travel series. Even the stairs are breathtaking. To history specials and award-winning documentaries. Better and bigger. That really is the fun part. Stream on any device with Passport on the PBS Video app. Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, social media, and producing, there's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Welcome back to Cronkite News. I'm Ashley Engel, and this is your Cronkite Sports Report. The ASU men's basketball team is getting set for a rivalry matchup tonight against the fourth-ranked University of Arizona. The Wildcats travel to Tempe tonight for a game in which both teams are coming off wins over ranked opponents. For the Sun Devils, it was a historic Saturday night as they took down third-ranked UCLA in triple overtime. The marathon victory is a huge boost for ASU, who had lost seven of its last eight games. It was the signature win head coach Bobby Hurley has been looking for all season. The Sun Devils held the Bruins to just 37% shooting. Fans brought the energy all night long and, of course, stormed the court afterwards. Oh, this is definitely uh, number one. You know, I played in a lot of games, you know, good atmospheres, but. You know, this definitely at that level, you know, being the number three team in the country, I don't think you get no better than that. The morale in the, in the locker room right now is unbelievable because we know that we're not backing into wins somehow. Like, we're like, we're winning these games and we've been very competitive in these games against elite teams. And, you know, we've been going toe to toe. So to break through and win, it's, it, it hopefully will, you know, build confidence as we keep going. And the big weekend wasn't over for ASU fans. Former Sun Devil running back Rashad White turned heads at the Senior Bowl, leading all players with 52 yards rushing. White also clocked the third fastest recorded speed at Senior Bowl practice, coming in at just over 21 miles per hour. 
During All-Star Weekend, NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman voiced his support for the Coyotes' ownership and their plan to temporarily play in the ASU's new facility beginning next fall. Bettman said the team's plan for a new arena in Tempe would change the club's fortune. Bettman went on to take a shot at the Suns, saying that they have expressed no interest in sharing the footprint center with the hockey team and, quote, they would prefer that the Coyotes leave town, end quote. Strong words from the commissioner. And speaking of the Suns, they returned to their winning ways on Saturday by defeating the Washington Wizards. DeAndre Ayton led the team with 20 points and 16 rebounds. Head coach Monty Williams and the Suns' big man were proud of the team's performance. We talked about giving up three 30-point quarters to Atlanta, so to hold a team to 51 through three against the team that just beat Philly um, says a lot about our squad, and that's the standard that we've, you know, put forth, and we want to, you know, push up. The energy was great, so we were locked in, especially the second quarter where we really start closing in our defense. I think we had like 12 stops in a row, and we were counting. It was a big weekend for Cardinals quarterback Kyler Murray as he threw three touchdowns in the Pro Bowl. The game, which was held at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, featured the best from around the NFL in an exhibition-style matchup. Murray's biggest touchdown came on a 75-yard drive in the fourth quarter. He was joined in the Pro Bowl by Cardinals teammates James Conner, Buda Baker, DJ Humphreys, and Chandler Jones. Baker and Jones were both starters on defense. In 2015, John Rahm got the a sponsor's exemption to play in the WM Phoenix Open as a junior at ASU. Now, seven years later, he is the number one player in the world. Now, another Arizona State player will get his shot to play on the People's Open this week. I talked to the freshman who is excited to tee off at the TPC. Arizona State freshman Preston Summerhays received the first sponsored exemption of 2022 to play in the WM Phoenix Open. Summerhays is familiar with TPC Scottsdale as he's been on the course many times as a kid with his uncle Daniel. I've been standard bearing at this event since I, I think I was 10 years old. Uh, I would go out standard bear for my uncle and I just gotten to know the course. Summer Hayes has played and practiced with many of the professionals who will tee it up at the People's Open, including Tony Fina. Tony's been a huge influence on me. It's going to be fun to, to play in the same field as him. Although Summer Hayes is going to be one of the youngest players on the field, he's not going to look like an ordinary college freshman. Arizona State men's golf head coach Matt Thurman says that Summer Hayes will fit right in at TPC and spectators will see that. He can handle the pressure. He's comfortable on the big stage. He's, he's, he loves it. I mean, he just loves the pressure. And I think the bigger the moment, the better he gets. The 19-year-old has played in the U.S. Open and other PGA events before. Pre-qualifying for his hometown tournament since he was 14 years old, the Scottsdale native will turn his dream into a reality. The first round of the tournament starts on Thursday, and we will be out there all week long with coverage on players, the Celebrity Pro-Am, and what fans can expect this year on the greenest show on grass. That's all for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Colton Sedona. Coming up after the break, we took a, take a look at space debris. Find out about what the White House plans to clean up the garbage floating in the Earth's atmosphere. Cronkite News provides students at ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism with the opportunity to gain real-world experience in the newsroom. At Cronkite News, our students produce professional content for audiences by taking on all roles, whether they be reporting, anchoring, producing, or studio production. Each department gives students first-hand professional newsroom experience. For more information, visit cronkitenews.azpbs.org. This Month in Passport, your on-demand library of the best of PBS. Everyone has secrets. Are you protecting someone? I have no choice. You do have a choice. You're looking at him. That's amazing. We could be standing on top of a T-Rex right now. <laughs> Women demanded new space and pushed the boundaries of what being a lady means. These and other shows are available with Passport. Become a member of this PBS station 
Sign in and start streaming today. I was so excited when I learned that I was going to be the next moderator of Washington Week. I was incredibly lucky to be mentored by Gwen Ifill. And what that gave to me was this confidence that I could be my full self and that I was deserving in whatever spaces I was in. Welcome to Washington Week. I also feel this great joy in taking the helm of Washington Week, knowing that I can mold it and make it my own, but also make sure that it is still within the legacy and the tradition that made it so great for all of these years. The White House announced they are joining a new space race, the race to clean up debris in the Earth's atmosphere. There are currently thousands of objects floating around in the Earth's atmosphere that are left over from previous space missions. It's a huge environmental concern. The Space Force is now launching a program called Orbital Prime that will give companies funding to help clean up the junk. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to crawfightnews.azpbs.org.